Instead of Googling a currency or weight conversion, just use Spotlight Search. Same with sports scores, finding specific photos and notes, or running a shortcut. Opening an app to do any of those tasks is a mistake that just makes you less efficient. And that's why in this video, I'm going to be showing you 12 more mistakes that nearly every iPhone user makes and what you should do instead. Now, another mistake you might want to stop making is reading through an entire article if you do not have the time. So we've all been there where you go in and start reading an article and it's just so long that you don't want to take the time to read through the entire thing and what you can do is tap on these two a's in the address bar right here and you will see an option for listen to page and that will essentially turn this article into a podcast episode so when you tap on that it will start speaking and if you tap on the glyph icon there, you can change the speaking rate. You can go back a sentence, forward a sentence, or you can play and pause right there within a Safari. Another mistake that you might want to stop making on your iPhone is sticking with the default sent from my iPhone signature in the mail application. In my opinion, this just looks tacky and unprofessional. To change this, just go into your settings and go to mail and then scroll down until you get to signature. And from here, you might want to change the signature on all all accounts to something a little bit more professional like thanks and then your name now something else you need to stop doing on your iPhone is tapping on each individual item in a list to select them so like this this is just the slowest way ever to select a bunch of items at a time and this applies to the mail application to notes to anything on iOS where you select multiple items in a list the quicker way to do this is just take two fingers and do a two finger drag up or down to select or deselect all the items quick and easily. Now, something else you need to stop doing on your iPhone is using photographic styles. So if you swipe up and you tap on these three squares right here, if you have anything selected like rich contrast or vibrant, any of that, go back to standard, turn those off because it's not gonna make your photos look good. I would recommend if you do want to change the color of your photos, like the contrast and the brightness and all of that, you can do it with the built-in editor here. You can even do auto and you can see you can adjust that here with the built-in editor on the iPhone. Or what you can do, what I would recommend, is just using one of my Lightroom presets that's made specific for Pro Raw photos and specific for iPhone it's photos like photos that you take with your iPhone so if you want to download that I will leave a link down in the description below I just think it's a much better way of getting a really good image on the iPhone and using photographic styles is not going to get you that result now something else that I stopped doing a long time ago and that I would recommend you stop doing as well is typing out an entire message instead of sitting there and typing out an entire message and I'm a fast typer but it's so much more efficient to use dictation and when you can also type simultaneously it helps a lot to fix any of the issues so if I want to start saying this is a message that I want to send and I don't like typing so this makes it a lot more efficient you can see right there it got everything perfectly right like I said it and if you don't like using dictation but you also don't like sitting there typing everything out you can also take advantage of a quick path so this is cool this is just where you drag so I just typed quick and I'll type path you can see you just kind of swipe over the keys and it will pick up on what you want to type now something else that you need to stop doing on your iphone is allowing a hundred different safari tabs to just build up and stay open in the background this can slow down the performance of safari and plus it's just cluttered it's not very good for efficiency and productivity so instead tap and hold on the tabs icon in the bottom right hand corner and from here you can close all tabs with one press however a more efficient way to do this is to just go into your safari settings and go to close tabs and from here i would recommend closing out tabs after one month because usually at least for me i've realized that i still need to reference different tabs and different websites after a few days or a week but after a month i'm pretty much done with anything that's opened up in safari so this will help keep your safari running smooth and it's also going to help you be more productive and more focused when you're in safari because you don't have 100 different tabs opened up just a quick reminder be sure to download the written pdf companion guide that complements this video it includes everything i'm covering here along with screenshots and written instructions that way you never forget anything from this video or any future video now here's another classic mistake that i see almost everybody making and that is allowing every application 
notification to send you notifications. I cannot tell you how many times I see people getting notifications from Target, from Sephora, from a random game that they downloaded two years ago and never played. Like that is just ridiculous because it's going to drain your battery. It's going to kill your focus. There's really nothing good out of letting all these applications, you know, send you notifications send you push notifications. So to change this, we're going to go into our settings and you can do this one of two ways. So one way is go into the notifications section right here and then just go into each individual application that you don't use and then just turn off notifications but that is the long way that is not the way i would recommend what i would recommend instead is going into the focus section and setting up a focus mode so for me i have recording a video and this is a focus mode that turns on automatically every single day of the week when i'm working and up here i can go into apps and i only allow notifications from two different applications that's it none of my other applications will get pushed through while i'm in this focus mode which again turns on automatically so it just makes it so much more efficient so i'm not getting these distracting notifications throughout the day and of course you can set it up to have people be able to contact you as well so you can see i have allowed calls from my favorites list in my phone application here's something else you need to stop doing on your iphone and that is allowing your notifications to clutter up your lock screen so take a look at this like if i wanted to see my wallpaper good luck all these notifications are stacking up and I can barely see anything. I can only see half of my screen and you know, instead you can swipe down, but every time you get a notification, it's going to pop up like this again. And it's just very distracting and it takes away from your lock screen wallpaper. So to change that, we're going to go into our settings, go to notifications, and then right up here under display as change this to count. That way, when you go into your notification center, anytime you get a notification from here on out, it will show up by default by just saying one notification. It's just going to show the amount of notifications with that small little text instead of these big bubbles that take away from your lock screen wallpaper. Now, here Here's another mistake that I see almost everybody make, and that is not moving applications that you constantly use to your main screen. And instead, you just have a cluttered home screen with a bunch of different app icons and a bunch of different apps that you rarely ever use. So we need to fix that. And there's a couple of different ways to go about doing this. But in my opinion, the best way and the easiest way is to tap and hold on one of your home screens, tap on the page dots down at the bottom, and then deselect one of the pages that has a lot of applications that you don't really use and then just simply hit the minus right here and remove that page it's not going to delete any applications it's just going to send them to the app library so now that we have that we're going to go back and we're going to create a new page so we have a fresh empty page right here we're going to tap on the plus icon to add a widget we're going to search for Siri suggestions and from here you will get these two rows of app icons and go ahead and tap on add widgets and we're going to do that again at least one more time and I'm going to add one more so you can see that we now have three series suggestions widgets on this page and when I tap on done you can see that it doesn't even look like those are widgets it just shows the app icons right there but using the machine learning you know the Apple's machine learning it's gonna know that these are the applications that you use most frequently and the cool thing is that since these are widgets they're gonna change periodically you're gonna see different applications in there at different times now of course you can always hide different pages as well so if you deselect a page it's going to hide it so now when we go here you can see we only have these two pages but that is just uh, you know another way to go about cleaning up and making your home screen look better but I think these series suggestions widgets are just awesome this next one is for those who tend to only be reminded of subscriptions once yours auto renews and you just wasted money on a subscription that you had no you know plan on actually using again so to change this go into your settings go to your Apple ID and then go to subscriptions and from here you will see all of your active subscriptions and also your expired subscriptions down here now the tip here the the little tip that you need to know is that anytime you see that it says renews that means that the subscription is currently active and if it says expiring that means you went in there and already clicked to expire that now Another little tip here that you need to know is that if you go into one of these sections here, into one of these applications, tap on see all plans, because this is going to show you all of the different plans that are offered from that application. Sometimes certain applications can be very deceptive and they'll only show you some of the higher cost subscription plans. So from here, you're able to see every plan that they offer, even if it doesn't show up in the app store or in the app itself. Now, here's another classic one that I see a lot of people make the mistake of, and that is putting your phone in airplane mode or do not disturb mode like the basic do not disturb mode I would recommend first off don't put your phone in airplane 
airplane mode if you're just trying to get rid of notifications because you're not just getting rid of notifications you're you're completely cutting off contact to yourself if there's a family emergency if you're in an emergency yourself you're gonna have to turn your phone back out of airplane mode especially if you sleep with airplane mode on you need to absolutely stop doing that that is just a terrible idea so if you want to mute all your notifications i alluded to this earlier but just go into your settings and then into focus modes and set up a focus mode based on whatever the case is where you use you know the airplane mode or do not disturb mode so you can set it up for sleep set it up for when you're working set it up for when you're you know working out driving whatever the case may be just use focus modes instead of airplane mode or the traditional do not disturb and then here's another classic one if you go into the app switcher every time you want to switch applications like if you do this you swipe up and then you go into that application that is the slowest way to you know multitask and go into different applications on iOS instead all you have to do is swipe at the bottom right here on this little bar and that's going to take you in and out of the different applications very quickly that way you don't have to go like this and then go into the application it's just an extra gesture that you don't need to make and then finally one more thing I have to mention in a video like this is please do not close out of applications don't force close out of applications unless the application is having an issue where it's frozen if it's bugged out if you're having an issue with the application sure it's fine to go ahead and force close it out like so but if you're not having an issue with the application do not do that because it is going to just take more battery and more energy more resources to reopen the application after you've forced closed it Apple has pretty much perfected how applications run in the background they're not going to take up much energy or battery life if you just leave them running in the background so it's recommended to just leave them running and don't force close out of them so those are a couple dozen mistakes that I see a lot of iPhone users making that you need to stop making right away so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos just like this and also check out that PDF companion guide listed down in the description below but anyways guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon